Shakespeare or not Shakespeare? That is the question. Why well, the answer is no Shakespeare. Welcome back to the shed. It's your man, Andy P. Man in the shed. Andy P, I hope you're all well. Probably getting a bit annoyed from this man now. So earlier on, we tried a bit of Shakespeare. Didn't really go well, down too well. But I have some news, people. If you watched one of my earlier videos, I made a comment about my mate, Ariel. Ariel runs another YouTube channel. Might have mentioned it before. Nice of hands. It's a great channel. Loads of Southeast Asian cooking, Filipino cooking, if that's your thing. If you want to learn a new type of cuisine and some really tasty recipes, there are plenty on there. There's also a lot of other stuff on there. He done a bit on the Bristol riots with the police earlier in the week. The Iceland um, volcano, which was erupting. 50,000 earthquakes in a month. That's kind of a lot. Anyway, so all that sort of stuff is on there. Anyway, I said I was watching one of his videos yesterday and he was looking at these trees. It was sort of like a, where's Wally? Wally being Ariel. We didn't actually see him. He was just filming trees and talking away in Filipino. Anyway, every now and again, there would be certain words which would be in English, but the sentence was still in Filipino. So I commented and said, hey, Ariel, there doesn't seem to be any word for Filipi in Filipino for fresh air, which is a bit odd for me. Well, this is the thing, because Ariel is a legend and he does reply to the BS that I send him. Unlike certain other people's, I'm not going to mention your name, Chris, but we still want to know about those bloody cats. And you haven't given us an answer yet. We are, the world is waiting, you know. And if you don't get us a reply, I hope you do find a bloody tiger up a tree. And then if he doesn't get you, the lion's at the bottom might. There you go. Anyway, so, where was I? Oh yeah, something about, something about fresh air in Philippines. So, he sent me back. So, I'll quickly read out what I, what I read. So, love the fact, some words, there's nothing in Filipino. So they use English. There's nothing in Filipino for fresh air. Really? So, Ariel, the legend that Ariel is, he's with back, fresh air. You're gonna have to excuse me. Ariel, I apologize for my murdering of your language. And as I've said to you when you used to work with me, your English is a million times better but my Filipino, and I am going to give you a master class in how bad Filipino can be spoken by an Englishman who knows no Filipino. So, sorry. <clears throat> Get my singing voice going. So it is either, because he's actually sent me two different things. It is either mag bang bong poniki, Andy in Filipino. <laughs> So, Magbangong Pokiki. I'm sure that's right. You know me, people. I'm right up there with the languages. Or, there's an alternative. So, is it Magbangong Pokiki, Ariel? Or is it Shariwang Hangin? Shariwang Hangin. Yeah, so, anyway, at least one of the... Um, Superstars has got back to me, and that'll be Ariel. So, where are we then? Oh, we're just the four, so four minutes into this one, and we're actually going to get on to what we're going to do. So, we're back with some more of your masterclass in acting from your boy, superstar actor extraordinaire. I'm sure there is a big budget movie that needs to pay the millions to your main man. As the star wall, I've got it all. Confusion. If you see my video, you know I got confusion. Terror. Fear. <laughs> yeah, so a complete range there. I'm sure you will agree. So 
What scene are we going to do? Well, we're going to do a scene from the second best Star Wars film, The Empire Strikes Back, many people's favourite. We're going to do a Pacific scene. It is the scene where Luke and R2-D2, the little droid, they go to the Dagobah system because he wants to find Yoda. So, I will set the scene. So, oh yeah, by the way, the good thing with living in 2021 is you can go onto the internet. I use Safari, but there is Google and other things. That's because I'm using an iPad, I use Safari. And you can look at things like um, movie scripts. You can look at all sorts of things, you know, what you people want to watch and look at. It's entirely up to you. There were no animals or people hurt in me looking up these, as far as I know. Anyway, so the X-Wing is now going off. Um, and Luke watches Artie's words as it's translated on a computer script. So what happens normally then here is a question. So when he's in a computer, when he's in his X-Wing, it tells him what Artie is saying. What happens normally when he is about and Artie talks to him? Because he can still understand him. It makes no sense. Anyway, so Luke looks at his computer and he says, yes, that's it. Dagobah. And R2 bleeps with hopeful inquiry. No, I'm not going to change my mind about this. Getting a little bit nervous. I'm not picking up any cities or technologies. Massive life forms, readings, though. There's something alive down there. R2 bleeps this time. It's slightly worried question. Yes, I'm sure it's completely safe for droids. Anyway, so then the X-Wing, it sort of, um, it lands, sinks, I think, if I remember. Yeah, I know, I know. All the scopes are dead. I can't see anything. Just hang on. I'm going to start the landing cycle. Yeah, not probably the best pilot here then. No R2. So they've now landed, and R2 gets himself out of the X-Wing and looks out. No R2, you stay put, I have to look around. And then R2 gets out and a short bleep, Luke moves along the nose, R2 loses his balance and disappears and splashes into the boggy lake. R2, R2, where are you? R2, you be more careful. And then he starts to get his little thing out. R2, that way, and Luke points away. Then he gets eaten by some sea monster type thing. R2! And then he gets spitting out. Oh no, are you alright? Come on, you're lucky you didn't taste very good. Anything broken? If you're saying come here was a bad idea, I'm beginning to agree with you. Oh, R2, what are we doing? It's like something out of a dream or I don't know. Maybe I'm just going crazy. And then it goes back to another bit. So we need to just go forward a bit to find out the next bit. So the mist has dispersed a bit, but it's still a very gloomy looking swamp. And this is incredible, actually. They actually made this swamp. It was in a studio and it was pretty cool the way they actually built up the set for this. Um, and then he's going to plug R2 in, because obviously R2's been in a lake. Ready for some power? Okay. Let's see now. Put that in there. There you go. The dry whistles of appreciation, and then opens a container of processed food and sits before the thermal heater. Now all I have to do is find this Yoda, if he even exists. Nervously looking around at the foreboding jungle still. There's something familiar about this place. I feel like, I don't know. And then there was a strange voice. I feel like what? Like we're being watched. He's got his gun out there and there's this little green creature with green eyes. I'm not going to spoil this for you. No spoilers. He showed up. He's who he's looking for. But he doesn't know it yet. Yeah, so. Um, I really put your weapon. I mean, you know him. So the good thing with this one is. You don't need me to put on a prop. You're going to know when it's Luke, and you're going to know when it's R2, and you're going to know when it's Azra on here, 
creature. The creature's Yoda, okay? Spoiler there, but it's Yoda. Um, yeah, so... Away with your weapon, I mean you no harm. I am wondering, why are you here? I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have. I would say, hmm? Right. Help you I can. Yes, hmm? I don't think so. I'm looking for a great warrior. Ah, a great warrior. <laughs> Wars not make one great. So then Yoda starts going through it, Luke's stuff, and he's throwing stuff out. Put that down. Hey, that's my dinner. I could get so big. Eating food of this kind. Listen, friend, we didn't mean to land in that puddle. And if we could get our ship out, we would. But we can't. So why don't you just... Ah, uh, can I get your shit out? Hey, you could have broken this. Don't do that. Oh, you're making a mess. Hey, give me that. Retreating with the lamp. Mine? I'll help you not. I don't want your help. I want my lamp back. I need it to get out of this slimy mud hole. Mud hole? Slimy? My home is this. Anyway, R2 then grabs hold of the lamp and he's fighting Yoda for it. Give me that! Give me that! Ah! 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 No, R2. Let him have it. Mine! Mine! R2! Mine! And then he gets his little stick and he hits him. Mine! Now will you move along, little fella? We got a lot of work to do. No, no, stay and help you, I will. Find your friend, hmm? I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi Master. Oh, Jedi Master Yoda. You see Yoda. You know him? Hmm, take you through him, I will. Yes, yes, but now we must eat. Come, good fruit, come. And then Yoda starts walking off towards his heart. Come on. R2 looks very upset. Whistles a blue streak of protest. Stay here and watch after the camp, R2. And then we go back to the Millennium. We want to get back to um, Luke. We don't want to go through the rest of it. Um, there's a lot to what happened, but there's a bit where Vader talks to the Empire, Emperor. But we got back to Luke, and they're now in Yoda's little house. Look, I'm sh look, I'm sure it's delicious. I just don't understand why we can't see Yoda now. Patience, for a Jedi, it is time to eat as well. Eat, eat hot, good fruit, hmm? Good, hmm? How far away is Yoda? Will it take us long to get there? Not far, Yoda, not far. Patience, soon you will be with him. Roof leaf, I crook. Why wish you become a Jedi? Hmm? Mostly because of my father, I guess. Your f ah, your father. Powerful Jedi. What's he? Powerful Jedi. Hmm. Oh, come on. How did you know my father? You don't even know who I am. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. Then there's another voice. He will learn patience, Ben Kenobi. Hmm, much anger in him. Like his father. Was I any different when you taught me? Ha, huh. he is not ready. Yoda, I am ready. I, Ben, I can be a Jedi. Tell, Ben, tell him I'm ready. Ready are you? You know, you know you are ready. For 800 years I have trained Jedi. My own counsel will I keep on who is to be trained. A Jedi must have the deepest commitment, the most serious mind. This one, a long time I have watched all his life, he has looked away to the future, to the horizon, never his mind on where he was, hmm? what he was doing. Hmm? Adventure, huh. excitement, huh. a Jedi craves not these things. You're reckless. Was I? So was I, if you remember. He's too old, yes, too old to begin the training. But I've learned so much. Will he finish what he begins? I won't fail you. I'm not afraid. Oh, you will be. You will be. And that is that. So, there you go. 
that is my little bit of Luke Skywalker meeting Yoda. It's not the best bit of acting you've probably seen. Maybe we could do with a little bit more actual acting rather than script reading. That's all we're doing at the moment. If you want to see some proper acting, some actual acting rather than just script reading, then let me know in the comments. So, what can we leave you with today? We gotta, this is the thing, you know, you need to have a long ass beginning which makes no sense. You need a pointless bit in the middle which could be a script reading or a bit of acting. And then you need some utter rubbish at the end to sprinkle on to finish. If you like, it could be your proverbial um, cherry on top of the cake. So, let's get back to what we know best. Not a lot there then. So we won't do that, we'll think of something else. So let's think, what can we finish on people? What shall we finish on? Do you remember Ariel, back in the day when we were cleaning? Not sure where we found the tutu from. I am taking part of the blame for some of the weird stuff you do on your channel. We had this I don't know, I think we might have had a hens do in the pub over the weekend. And they left this little pink tutu. Is it a tutu thing? Like a little skirty thing? That, um, what is it? Ballet people in that way, you know, the women. Is it a tutu? Could be, could be cool tango else, but we're going to go with tutu anyway. So, he had his chef whites, which weren't white, they were black for some reason. Proper chefs wear white. Gordon Ramsay wears white. Um, Michelle Roux wears white. I wear white. So that's what proper chefs should wear. Neil, I hope you wear white. Probably don't. You probably wear pink or something because you're a bit gay. But there you go. Oh, good job. That, that'll be one for HR. Oh, my God. Don't tell the um, internet Nazis about me. They might come and tell me off for calling you that. Anyway, don't mean to be offensive to anyone, but, you know, you are what you are. Chefs should wear white. Anyway, so we had this tutu. And um, it was a Monday, I believe, because we still had some Yorkshire puddings on the night before. And we used to make some big old Yorkshire puddings in the day when we used to work. Of course, you know, all that's changed now. But, so, we get him to stick some of them up there for his boobies. And he put this pink tutu on. And then he spent the whole day in it. He looked the part. And now you go and watch any of his videos on Night of Hands. You will see my old pal, um, Ariel, dressed up as a woman quite regularly. I did say to him, and I'm going to pass this on now, Ariel. If you are to come in your drag to the pub one night, I will buy you a pint. Be on me. There you go. I'm not buying more night because you'll probably get so drunk that I'll have no money. But yeah, if you want to come in drag, I'll make sure the bouncers let you in, you weirdo. And I'll give you a nice table and you can have a pint with me. There you go. That's your offer. Don't be late though because I won't be hanging, hanging around because that ain't what I do anymore. That ain't my thing. I like to get home after work. After all, things have changed, Rocky. Who knew? Anyway. There you go, Empire Strikes Back. It's the scene where Luke meets Yoda, even though he didn't know it was me and Yoda. Kind of weird. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. Again, no real spoilers. That particular film is now 41 years old. Wow. Makes me feel old. Well, probably because I am pretty old, but there you go. If there are any other films that you think, hey Andy, don't know if you've watched this one, or any scenes from a film, and if I haven't seen it, it could be even more special, because I don't know what's going on. In fact, send me in a list of films and certain scenes that you think, ah, that'd be quite fun if he does, and if I haven't seen them, you know, there are lots of films out there that I haven't seen, then even better so if you've got a scene from say the godfather never seen the godfather and i'm not really into those sort of films so 
probably not going to see The Godfather. If you've got any, then, you know, text me and let me know. I am also going to do some of my favourite comedy because I did have a list of comedies, horror, sci-fi. Yep, I am going to get around to doing them and I will get them done very soon. Obviously, I do have a part-time job and I can't just stand in the shed for hours just talking absolute dribble, even though that's all I've done today. Did record another video, but I sort of forgot what it was about. So what's the point? I think there might have been a bit of Shakespeare in there, possibly, but I'm just going to delete it so it doesn't really matter what it was about. So I did share a story about, a few stories about my time at Key 15 and I did promise a video on that which to be fair I'm probably not going to do it today now I'm probably going to give that one a bit of time to think about it because details and all that and you know it's all about the mise en place getting everything prepared but um yeah there's definitely going to be some stories from there for memory um but obviously memory yeah as long as we got one but yeah, we will look to do one of those shortly. Any other times, you know, let me know and I will try and remember some stupid ass stories. Might do another one in college as well because that was always plenty of time there and they were quite amusing. Anyway, hope you did actually enjoy the video. I'm sure you didn't learn anything because there's not a lot to learn. Maybe that's the thing. I could end it with some facts. Like, well, I don't know. Let's think of some facts. What I am actually going to do also is a story on health and safety and how it has changed over the years. And we're going to go with not just UK, but also America and around the world. We'll look at some of the worst accidents which actually help to improve things. So if we go back to, say, the 1980s, we had three high profile football stadium disasters there we had the bradford city fire which was horrific and i remember at college we watched that and also on the day it was shown on tv didn't we really take it in so much then i think it was I think it was about 10 when this happened and um basically bradford city had just got promoted i think they were in then division three or maybe division four um which is now Division 2, because the whole football system has completely changed. But they were in a lower league, and they were getting promoted as league champions. And someone had dropped a cigarette, and it caused a fire, and the whole stand within five minutes was ablaze. And many people died. There was also the Heysel City, no, the Heysel Stadium disaster in um, Brussels, I believe that, that is where that was, in Belgium where Liverpool were taking on Juventus in the final. They still played the final about two hours later. And Juve won and Liverpool got the whole of England kicked out of Europe for five years. And then in 1989, there was Hillsborough. Again, there was a crush. And these events actually, although horrific, um, helped you know, make football stadiums safer. So on the whole, you'd say it was a good thing. But it's funny how disasters and things like that make people think, oh, actually, yeah, that's probably blocking that door isn't a good thing. And that's why we have fire safety regulations, health and safety. So we might do a bit of a, oh my God, I knew this video is a bit boring, but it's quite important. And, you know, look into that. Probably a bit more on politics as well, because... I love the haters and I love the um, lovers. There you go. Anyway, that'll do for a yet another video. Another one. Get the get the popcorn ready, Lisa. We've got another video. This is your entertainment for the night. It's your man Andy in his in his shed. There's the shed. Hope you're all well. Man in the shed. Andy P. Out of here. See you, pals. Oh, sorry. Gotta get it right. See you, pals.